on The Deborah Kennedy Show love empowering women and young women. And we have a very special guest tonight that is simply a trailblazer in not only her faith, but also her walk with being an amazing person that is just off the chain as a reference <laughs> to everyone, as they should be. And it's Miss uh, Michaela Stark. Hello. I'm so excited to be here. We're glad you're here. <laughs> Thank you. You're so gorgeous. But what I'm the most impressed with is not only are you a cheerleader at Clemson, mm -hmm. and we're going to talk about that, and a pageant girl, but mm -hmm. also a, a really young woman of faith. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about how you walk that walk, walk mm -hmm. being a cheerleader at Clemson. I think it started with my mom and the example that she set for me. Um, I believe that if you have great role models in your life, you can emulate them. And so it started with her. But then being at Clemson, I think the biggest thing is just trusting God's timing and his plan. And I've seen that in so many different areas in my life and with cheerleading especially. So I tried out as a senior in high school about to go into my freshman year. And when I first tried out for the team, I got put on the practice team. So at Clemson, we have an all-girl team, which has 10 girls and 10 guys, and then we have, or that's the COA team, I'm sorry. <laughs> then the all-girl team has um, 20 to 24 girls on it. And so there was a senior who was trying out for the team, and she was injured. So they didn't know if she was going to actually be clear or not, so they put me on the practice team just because they didn't know what was going to happen with her. So I just prayed about it, and I was like, Lord, you know, I know that right now I'm just on the practice team, and so I don't know if cheerleading is going to be where I'm going to be led when I'm in college. You know, maybe I'm supposed to get involved in something else, and you're going to lead me mm -hmm. to get involved in something else. And then about a month later, I got the call, and my coach was like, Hannah, she's not going to be able to cheer this year, so the spot is completely yours. Wow. You're going to be on the sidelines. I think that was just a test for me and just seeing God was just seeing what, what was I going to do when I got a little bit of rejection, was I going to, you know, be upset and be down about it? Or was I going to still rejoice and know that he had a plan? And so I think just straight off the bat, not even being at Clemson yet, I just saw that he had this amazing plan for me. And that no matter what it was going to be, whether it was going to be cheerleading or whether it was going to be my classes or my other activities, he was going to guide what I was going to do. So it started right off the bat, and I think that I've just let that lead me through my first year at college. Your mama has done a fine <laughs> yes, yes. job raising you. you. Thank you. So you talk about your first year of college, but you're technically in your, like, fifth year of college based on what you were <laughs> yes, saying yes. earlier as far mm -hmm. as your grades. So tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about kind of how you've done that and where you're, how you're graduating early in, in mm -hmm. those things. Okay, I was in a program called the Scholars Academy, and I'm from Spartanburg, South Carolina. So it's a program that's within our Spartanburg School District. And so we have seven high schools in Spartanburg County. And each of those high schools, if you go to those, in the eighth grade, you can apply for this program. And the program basically means that if you get into the program in the eighth grade, in the ninth grade, you start taking all of your classes at USC Upstate, our local college. Wow. And so I didn't take any classes at my high school. I took all classes there, all four years of high school. So I was able to graduate high school finishing um, 75 college credits, which is basically two years That's of college. Awesome. And it was all free. It was all paid for by my district. So that was amazing. Just get that head start. That's incredible. Not have the burden of having two extra years of college that we had to pay for. Um, I know your mama loves you. I know. Right. My parents still really? love that one. And so uh, this was my first year at Clemson, my first year as a real college student. But I'll actually graduate next May with my bachelor's in science of in psychology with a minor in youth development studies. And I'm hoping to go to grad school. So I'm hoping to still be at Clemson for all four years. Just get two degrees. On there. So let me ask you this. So your college experience officially started this year, right? Yes. How yes. different is that compared to the classes you're taking? What's what's the balance like now? Well, since I was taking already taking college classes in high school, it's same class structure, and I think that that's one of the reasons I was had a little bit of an advantage over regular high school kids yeah. coming into college because I had gone over that learning curve. I had already mm -hmm. you know figured out that professors you know aren't as hands on as teachers in high school right. and so you really have to be independent and really take it upon yourself to study if you're interested in the classes or if you want to do well you know it comes back to you so it's a responsibility thing so I already had you know that under my belt and then just coming into college being a student athlete I knew that I really had to manage my time well mm -hmm. and so that was my biggest thing is just making sure that I have my planner it's like my second bible I live by that thing so I put <laughs> everything in my planner and it just really helped me stay organized. We're going to take a quick break. I want okay. to hear about I Heard You Went to Paris as well. Oh, I did. Oh, I want to hear all about that. <laughs> but we're going to show some of the amazing pictures of not only your cheerleading at Clemson, mm -hmm. but some amazing pageant pictures. And then we're going to come back and talk about your trip to Paris and all about the pageant world okay. and the wonderful title that you have. Sounds good. Okay. 
all of that when we come back with Michaela Stark, but let's enjoy these pictures as we go to break. Now we're back with Michaela Stark. Oh my gosh, Michaela, those <laughs> pictures going from being an amazing cheerleader to your pageant days. But first, I want to talk about your Paris trip. Tell me all Ooh. about it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I have wanted to go to Paris. You know, ever since I was a little kid, that was always Hawaii and Paris were like my two bucket lists. And I made it to Paris first. Maybe Hawaii will come later. But my boyfriend, yes, I do have time for a boyfriend. We I need to see this plan. Yes, I want exactly. to see the plan. You do. I know. I have to, I, oh, I pencil in our dates, too. Like, don't you worry. That planner is color-coded, too. It's of course. very organized. Um but oh, I met time. him, yes, always has to be color-coded. I met him in the program that I was talking about, the Scholars oh, cool. Academy. So he's a year older than me, went to a different high school, but since we were both in that program, that's how we were able to meet each other. And I think just he was so driven with his academics, just like I was, and we were so, you know, future-oriented and know, we knew that we wanted to go to school. We were very yeah. focused on our academics. I think that's what drew us together. And a mutual friend introduced us, and the rest is history. <laughs> um, thankfully, we're both at Clemson now that we didn't know that we both wanted to go to Clemson, but it just kind of ended up. I always wanted to cheer at Clemson. He's an engineer, so Clemson's a wonderful right. engineering school. So that's where we both ended up. And Is he, he mom approved? Oh, yes. Okay. Mom, okay. mom okay. loves him. Okay. And dad I love, approved? Yes, dad. Okay. The whole family. He's golden. The whole family <laughs> approves. Um, but he's actually first generation American. His parents were both born and raised in France. Oh. And so oh. they went to college there, got married there, lived there for a while. All of his family lives in Europe somewhere. A lot of them in France, but some other places. Lots so more Paris? places to visit. Yes, to visit. yes. That yes. is why we went to Paris. That's what I was getting at. So yes. he, you know, has been several times. They go every other summer. To, to France to visit his family and we were trying to figure out what we were going to do for spring break and his mom was like why don't y'all just go to Paris I mean we have family there so you, you can just stay with my sister so you don't have to pay for lodging and you guys can have dinner with them every night so that'll help on meals so I just had to pay for my flight there oh, wow. and I brought some money for some other things that I wanted so we were very fortunate to have his family that lived there that we were able to stay with and that's kind of how we were able to afford the trip but I worked over the summer and saved up um, money and worked over Christmas as well and just was able to save up my money for the plane ticket and then we just had the best time I loved it over there the food is wonderful <laughs> unmatched but it was a so fun Michaela, trip for both of us Florida Paris oh Paris Florida <laughs> Paris there is no comparison <laughs> except when we went it was cold over there oh. so um a lot of people go somewhere tropical for their uh -huh. spring break. And I love the beach just as much as anyone. But, of course, Paris is not match. And you got to do it with local, I mean, people that live there. Yes. So you got to see a whole different side of exactly. Paris probably than the mm -hmm. actual tourists. And his have. first That's language cool. is French. So, I mean, we got around so easily and he could I'm show jealous. me the roads. <laughs> I know. A lot. I know. Yeah. He's the best. I mean, I love him for so many other reasons. But that was a cool experience that I'll never forget. So, so cool. speaking of experience, your mother is so proud of your pageant world. And yes. I'm so proud of you, too. Mm -hmm. And so tell our audience out mm -hmm. there what title you had, how what you did with it, mm -hmm. and your just map for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, the final title, the final goal was Miss South Carolina Teen. And I ended up winning Miss South Carolina Teen 2016 within the Miss America organization. But it didn't, it was an easy road. I didn't just win my first try into it. I actually competed for five years oh, wow. before I actually won the title of Miss South Carolina Teen. So I competed for the first time at 13 years old. I was the youngest contestant in the pageant that year and was honestly a little bit over 
over my head, in, in over my head, and um, just kind of wanted to get my feet wet. I love the organization. I was a Palmetto Princess, which is a part of their mentoring program. So little girls can be with contestants and be mentored through that organization. So I did that, knew that I loved the organization. And every year I came back because I knew that I loved the organization. I was passionate about service and being a leader in my community. And every year I learned something. Um, someone once told me that adversity can make you bitter or it can make you better. And I chose to let the adversity of not winning four times before I go back, not discourage me, but again, um, trust in God's timing and know that if I was meant to be my South Carolina teen, then it would happen. And I know that when I finally won, I was the most prepared. I knew so many more people in my community and was able to make a bigger difference than I would have been able to if I had won any of the other four years. I'm going to adopt you, Michaela. <laughs> you are just the real what, deal. What I love about Michaela oh, is she started out talking about who are role models for. Mm -hmm. And what you've done in this, you know, this short amount of time is you've talked about goal planning and the way you've achieved your stuff in college and, you know, tour and going to Paris and doing things and, and your setbacks with pageantry, but yet, you know, ultimately service and things like that. You are a role model and you're walking you. faith and who you are as a daily person, I'm sure is a role model to so many young girls. Thank and that you. is something so amazing. I mean, I applaud you for that. And I know there are a lot of young girls out there that admire you for that. Thank you so much. That's what I strive for, to, to be a role model and to give back to those who have invested in me. You're doing an amazing job, and I know Thank why you. your mama is so proud of you. We're proud. That's we're I, I, like She's mama. awesome. Thank so you. So we're going to close with your amazing video announcing not only the question, which is so <laughs> stressful when you're on stage, it is stressful but also the winning moment. So mm -hmm. we're going to close with that. Thank you so much Thank for you. stopping Thank by you. the set and just hanging with us tonight. And our audience should enjoy, enjoy this amazing video of this amazing, empowering young lady that's really making a difference in the world. Tonight we are here for the Miss South Carolina organization's most exciting night of the year. One of the 61 young women will be crowned your new Miss South Carolina teen 2016. Miss Greenville 